Tonight, we're going to make a compass rose. So, with this compass rose, this is sepaly, and believe it or not, there is a binding around this edge. It's walnut, and it's mellowed in color, so it almost blends with the sepaly. So I, want, I don't want that to happen on, on this next one. So that's why I chose to use the wenge with the zebra wood, because it's got that dark, that nice dark line, almost, almost like ebony, but it has a little more brownish quality to it. So what about the materials we're going to use for the compass rose? So we've got rosewood and curly maple. And that makes a strong contrast. And because that you have that dark, it gives the appearance of a three-dimensional, like triangular piece, classic kind of compass rose. It's an eight-piece match that each one of these points lands right on the scene. And that's what we want to execute here. Now, I, I, here's the material very similar that I used for a different one. I have curly maple, but ebony. And that's quite a strong contrast. And I thought about using that here on this one, but I don't like how the white of the, the maple is so close to the white of the zebra wood. It should be like a darker compass rose. So I thought to use ebony and maybe a wood that is browner and not so strong of a contrast. So what if we use something like this, this is Nara. Now that's brown, but still not enough. And it kind of gets lost a little bit. So then I was looking at this material I had. And this, I kind of like this. Here's, here's another piece of ebony. So let's just focus on these. So I wasn't even sure what this wood was. I forget where I got it. Um, but I have a sample pack that I got from Certainly Wood. And they have a sample in there that this is very close. And this is Loro Preto from Brazil. And this, I'm almost sure that that's what this is. So it's similar to Bacote and, uh, or Bacote. And I like that. I like the brown. It's darker. It's almost like these dark brown lines in here. And then we have the ebony ties in with the wenge. So That'll be kind of a classy, uh, darker compass rose. All right, so to do this, you just have to tape two strips together in order to get the uh, rose. So let me, let me just review really quickly here. So it, if we tape together to begin with the contrasting pieces in a long strip like this, then we just need to cut out this shape, this one kind of point, cut it out of here. So we just need four pieces. So the first thing I did was tape up some of this material. Then we'll work with our pattern. You can draw your own pattern and just decide, okay, I want it to be about that shape. So this is one of the little guys. This is actually a pattern for a larger compass rose, and this is a larger lobe here. See, these are three inches long. This is three inches long. These are two and a half. And the distance right there, if you wanted to try this one, is 13 16 from there to there. I'm just looking at this larger cut, okay? 13 16 out here. And this is 90 degrees. This angle is always 90 because you've got four of them meeting in a cross. And then it's two and a half inches out to the point. All right. So we, I made a little smaller template. And I made these templates out of harder, thicker wood so that I could cut along them more easily without the material slipping under. So this is the very similar template to that. And so look at here's the little guy. That'll fit right there. So this is the double. All right. Simple, huh? That's all you need. So all I had to do is tape them up. Now, veneer tape is different than masking tape 
it's got a super tacky back on it. It's very thin, but it's pretty strong. And when you tape across the joint, it dries and it actually pulls it together a little bit. Now they do have solid tape. And then this one has perforations like just down the sides. Some have holes down the middle too. I kind of wish this did because it's helpful to use the veneer tape to do something like this so that using the holes, you'll be able to see the seam when you lay out to cut your little shapes, right? So I'm going to use the veneer tape. I'm just going to offset it so the holes run along the seam. And I pre-cut straight edges and I put a little chalk mark on the straight edge side. And I'm just going to tape it up like this. Now I'm going to take a long piece and go right down the length, but I'm going to offset it so that I can see the seam along the holes. There we go. And I just cut these strips like five eighths of an inch wide. It's Macassar, but I picked a spot where the stripiness is pretty low. So here's another piece. You can see more stripes here. It's almost like Gaboon Ebony, almost dead black. So that's going to be our, our contrast. That's cool. It's going to be very unique and custom compass rose. All right, so once I've got that, I just chopped it up into to lengths. And what I'm going to do is cut out of this. This one, like this is a piece that I already cut. It's just a little over length of my little uh, shape there, about an eighth inch on each end maybe. But once I get that on there, now I want to make sure that I keep things oriented the same way. You've got to keep them this way. You can choose either way as long as you keep it oriented so that the black is always on the same side as you go around. And then you're going to orient your smaller one the same direction. So I'm going to set that point right on the seam and then the back end on the seam there. I'm going to hold it down with good pressure. Uh, you know something that keeps it from sliding is to wet the back a little bit. Now I'm going to hold pressure and use my veneer saw to cut these long sides. Just careful not to cut yourself. That's the band-aid on my finger. Actually, I didn't do that. I'm doing this. I'm doing something else. Okay, nice clean cuts down the sides. Now, to make that short cut, it's, you don't really have a lot to bear against with the, so I prefer to just use a nice sharp three quarter inch chisel. I'm going to lay it right flat against there and just put my shoulder behind it and chop it right off. And I'm going to roll it around, do the same thing on this side. Now this is a good 90 degree corner. That's critical to have these things fit. Here we go. All right. So I would just cut one like that and I need three more and then I would do the same thing with the little pattern so I'd end up with some little ones and it basically would end up with this. I'd have four large ones and four small ones. What I want to do is tape them together right on top of my top with that point hitting on the seam. Now this would be very difficult to do if uh, if I just taped this up by itself and then hoped that it matched, it's not going to. It would be very, you're going to have little tweaks where it's going to be hard to get it to match. So that little next level of fine work, make sure that the point lands on the seam. Okay, it'll just set it off. And if somebody really looks, they'll go, wow, that guy. A girl really cares. I just want to get the first one so that it's on the seam. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm going to take a piece of masking tape. First two are good. And this is tight right here in the line. I'm right on the line across there. So I'm going to take a smaller piece and just piece it right here. Okay, 
Now I'm going to set this one in and I want that to meet, hit the line and come out at the point. All right, I'm not quite there. Let me try this one. If I hit it, I don't have to adjust. Don't have to adjust it, but I don't mind adjusting it. Just why bother if you got one that fits? So I'm going to slip it out here. All right, I'm a little off. So what I'm going to do is get my block plane. Now this is a Lee Nielsen low angle, 60 and a half. I love this plane. It's you can dial it in so fine, and I've got it set beautifully so that I can actually plane this just by holding it up on edge like this. See, each time I do that, I'm taking off a little bit. So let's see what happened. That looks great. All right, I'm going to tape this one. All right, the last one's going to come around. I'm going to set it in there. Let's see what happens. All right, it's wiggling a little bit, so I have to slightly change that angle, but let's see how it's doing out here. Okay, I'm missing. Look at that. I'm missing the point by... Let me get a pencil so you can see how much. Okay, the line is really like here. You see that V cut? It's really that V, so i got to get over to there. So to do that, I'm just going to change the angle down here a little bit. So I got to take a little off here and a little off here. So I'm just going to remember that. I'm going to hold it. So I first take it here. I'm just holding it up a little bit. I'm planing a little bit of an angle. Now I'm going to turn it and I want to plane down near the toe there. It's that easy, really. It's you get used to it. Now, I know I got a ways to go here, but I'm a little closer. So I want to do that again. I want to tweak it that way. So I'm going to take again a little more off there. The first time you do this, it'll take you longer because you're not sure the tolerances of everything. But after you do a few, like anything, I guess, you, you get comfortable with it. Okay, that's, see that how it's rocking a little, but I'm almost on the point. So I'm going to go a little bit more. That's more of an adjustment than I had to make on the others. Okay, and then I'm going to really hit this. You know, if, you, if something goes wrong, you can always cut another piece. But uh, all right, look at that right there. Oh, maybe a tiny bit more. Let's just do a tiny bit more. <laughs> I'm the anal retentive woodworker. What was that guy? <laughs> that was an old Saturday Night Live skit. You can look it up on uh, YouTube. The anal retentive woodworker. He's like, <laughs> he never gets any work done. But he's so fussy about how he throws his trash out and everything. It's so funny. All right. Whoa, look at that. Right on the point. That's beautiful. So this side is good. I just want to tweak that so it fits in the hand there better. All right, beautiful. All right, so that's fitting nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and tape it. Now we've got the four points set. Now we just have to fit these. It's simple. I've got this one set, and it fits beautifully. It doesn't rock, and it's right on the point. That's great. I love when that happens. So I'm going to push and tape that one right in. And then I go right on around. And it's this easy. You just, if they don't fit, you'll just adjust it like I did earlier. Now, another way, instead of planing, you can sand it. 
So I, you can just glue a piece of 150 grit paper onto a piece of plywood. I just have a three quarter inch piece and you can just lightly drag it and sand it. And that works good, but it's, you know, if you can set this up, you just lose sometimes the flatness a little bit on the sanding, but you can get a hang of it and it'll do quite well. So look at that one, boom, right in the money. It's nice, because if, if your templates are set up nice, then you're going to find it easier to land in the right position here. Last one, right there. And that looks pretty close. It's fine. All right. I'm just going to put that there, and we'll roll it. Check that out. It's looking great. Now under here, it's looking very nice. Now you wish you could see it, right? Without the tape on it, just to get the satisfaction. But actually, this is a good spot where you just want to stop and mark it so that you, you know which point goes where before you move it or take it out. So I'm just going to put a black spot right there. You can put whatever you want, an X. And then I'm going to put a black spot. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a piece of chalk out here. I could put a piece of tape and a black spot on the tape, but I'll just put this dot and that orients these two together. Okay, So that's where it goes. Now, before I lift it out, I can actually cut it in. So this is only a 42nd of an inch thick. So I'm going to use a scalpel, and we'll put a link for this too. This is Swan Morton. I love this thing. It's got a nice weight to it. Really sweet. If you have an X-Acto knife that you like, you can use that. Even a utility knife will work. But what's great about the scalpel is it's super sharp, of course, and it's very strong and rigid. There's not a lot of flopping around. So I can come in here and I can slice. I go over it like three or four times, maybe more just so I know that I'm all the way through. Now, I'm not doing it right now because I'm not done with this. <laughs> and I'm anal retentive. I don't want to ruin it. So then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut deep and then pull, making sure that I'm, I have a good cut right at the point and right in here. So I just want to slice that. And while it's still taped, I'll come over here. Now, this one I can hold my finger. And I could cut the middle ones here. Then I can tape and remove this tape and then cut this one. But everything else is taped, you know, while you're knifing around another point. So it's never going to shift on you. It feels very solid, no big deal. You're just going to knife right up against it. Light cuts at first so that it doesn't wander. So you establish the groove with a light cut. If you go really heavy, it might want to track with the grain and ride into the teeth or something like that. So once I've knifed all around, then I'm going to set this aside. And then I just have to set the router to that depth. And let's take this off. Now this one, I already did a lot of it. I, I routed to it, but I want to show you routing. There's two lobes that I didn't route yet. So we can, you can get the whole gist of it. So here's my black mark, there's my chalk. I'm going to set this over here. Now look, I already routed and cleaned out those points. And that depth is just the thickness of the piece of veneer. So here's what I use for this. Let me give a, I'm going to put a clamp on this. The router that I used, I just use my DeWalt. And I've got a 1 8 inch solid carbide bit. So this thing's great for like little detail inlays and whatever. That's already set to the thickness of the veneer. I did a little test on some MDF and then I held the veneer right in against the lip and I want to feel that flush. When you got it there, you're good to go. Now, before I actually started routing, I'm not going to try to route right to the knife line. The knife line's really hard to see. So what I did was, I, 
this is really important. Before you route, put make a pen line about a sixteenth in from the knife line. Okay, see, here's my knife line, here's my pen line. I just took a little straight edge and I drew these lines. But you want to be about a sixteenth. So when I route, I'm going to route right to the pen line. If I bump over it and I space out for a second, it's not a problem because I still haven't hit the knife line. I definitely don't want to do that. And then I'll route as far as I can up here. And if I've cut deeply enough, that little sixteenth will easily release using the chisel. And well, I'll show you right now. Here we go. Okay, so now we've got routed just to our line. Now I just need to set the chisel. I'm going to set the chisel right in my knife line. I've just got a three quarter inch chisel, nice and sharp. And because it's so thin, I don't have to push really hard. I'm just pushing enough to make sure that I've cut all the way through the veneer because the knife may not have. And then I'm going to get right up near the point. Look how that falls out. Nice. It doesn't take much. I think I spent just over 10 minutes on the rest of that. Now that last piece sometimes what I'll use is a an awl, something with a point like this come in, it'll just lift right out. And come here. So you want to make sure that it's good all the way to the point. <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure everything is tidy. Now it'll fit pretty nicely. If there's any looseness, you know, a little bit, it's nothing big, because it is darker and it's hard to see if there's a slight gap anyway. So don't worry if it's not perfect. It'll only be around for 300 years. And people will always look and say, you know, that table's nice, except uh, one little thing. Don't, don't do that to yourself. All right, here's my chalk. There's my point. I'm going to set her in. Hopefully she seats nicely in there. Oh, yeah. All right, every point sits right in and it's looking good. So then I got the glue in and then I'll roll it like this. You could put a piece of tape on, but I think you'll find it's there. And then I'll put a piece of paper over the top and back in the press. You could clamp, make up something if you, if you don't want to do the press, but I just put the call back on and back in the press. And I've got one in the press. We're going to pull it out and see what it looks like. All right, let's get her out. See what we got. Here's my paper. And there it is. <laughs> now we're going to get the masking tape off. But you'll see this... Um, Veneer tape is a little tough. Oh, it's coming off all right. But it, it, re it responds well to um, moisture. If you dampen it like that, the 
the veneer tape softens up a little bit. The zebra wood's cool because it's goldeny. All right, so. If I was patient and gave it more time, actually, let's give it a little more heat. It um, it really does come off nicely with just the water. But yeah, the heat definitely helps. All right, so let's. I'm gonna get this the sander now. Let's sand that. I'm gonna heat it. Just get that moisture off. There we go. Let's give it a little sanding. Little orbital. I've got 150 on there, but it's kind of broken down. I'm just going to card scrape a little bit more. Got a little gluey residue right out at the points. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to give it one final sanding. All right, stay right there. Just going to get a, uh, a little denatured alcohol. We'll wash it on there and see what it looks like. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Got to keep it wet there. Can you see it nice in the camera? Look at that, huh? Is that classy? That changes everything, huh? Get the finish on and that's what it's going to look like. Isn't that nice, that darker brown? I like how it sets off the color of the zebra wood and then you have the ebony. Looks great. And we've got the dark line of the wenge around the edge. Really works nicely. This could be a tabletop. Um, but you know what else it could be? You could make a little uh, Lazy Susan. So this is a disc, not even uh, a half inch thick, and I just put an edging on it. You could put a little more veneer here, maybe some little rubber stops. You could have it in the middle of a table, and it'd be a nice little Lazy Susan right in the middle of a sweet table. And that's just 17 and 5 eighths diameter, I believe. Of course, we didn't go into all the nuances and subtlety of details, but there's where I say, you know, if you want to do a class, we'll really do a deep dive into veneering. It's a wonderful way to do some amazing work. And plus, we can have a good time hanging out for a whole week. So.